Hi folks, welcome to the channel. Uh, it's a new channel we've decided to set up. We've actually done quite a lot of work in the past that we haven't actually filmed. Uh, thought we'd set up this channel just to give everyone just a little insight into what we get up to. It's nothing too serious, it's just myself and my father. Messing about with a little bit of classic plant, a um, little bit of restoration work. Nothing too pretty, nothing too fancy. So, come out today. This is our 1976 Case 450 track shovel. Uh, we acquired this around about five years ago now. Uh, it was pretty much left to rot uh, in, a, in a farmer's field. Uh, it had been stood for a good, a good few years prior to us uh, purchasing it. We had to do quite a bit of work on it uh, to retrieve it from the field. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't film any of that. Um, I may have a few, a few pictures from when we, uh, we first bought it that I'll edit in here for you to see. So when we first arrived at the machine, uh, I'm pulling the dipstick. There was quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of water in the sump mixed with the oil. Um, Initial thoughts were potentially a uh, cracked liner, uh, given that it had been stood for so long and there was no antifreeze in the radiator. So we were thinking uh, we maybe needing a, a complete engine rebuild. It turned out not to be the case, fortunately. Uh, it was just the, the core plug had cracked or it actually. Uh, rusted through on top of the head which was uh, allowing water to run down uh, one of the oil galleys into the sub. So it was a nice quick and cheap fix. <coughs> She's powered by a case 188D uh, four cylinder diesel non-turbo. Already, uh, we had to put some, some new pipes onto uh, onto the four in one year and onto the main lift cylinders just to be, uh, be able to retrieve retrieve the machine from uh, from where it was sat. Uh, those pipes are very much uh, you know worn through, and there was no way of uh, of actually lifting the. Uh, in the bucket out of the dirt so so our aim today is just to try and get this old girl running uh, it's last run probably around three years ago um, it's just sat here since we haven't actually uh, had the time to do anything with it so the intention for this machine is to get it all back up back up and running uh, to a usable state and then we intend to uh, take it to some of the working plant shows around the UK. There's a couple of uh, couple of jobs I need doing. The seals are gone in the uh, in the track tensioners, so a future video will be us trying to split the tracks and replace those seals. We've taken off the master cylinders for the brakes. The seals were all, all worn in there, uh, so the brakes were completely non-functional. And then it's just a few little jobs. Making some new linkages here. Quite a lot of play in this.
Yeah. So we're gonna throw a new battery, or let's say new. I'm gonna throw a fresh battery in here. Check all the fluids. And see if she'll start. Now there's no lift there's no lift pump on this machine. So we're gonna have to try and get or oh, we're gonna use a method that we find quite effective to get some fuel up to the uh, up to the pump. Looks to be a fair bit in there. Just going to check the oil. Yeah, that's a nice colour. As you said, the um, in the rocker cover, there's four core plugs. And one of them had rusted away, and the water was running from the uh, cooling system, running up through the head and back down into the sump. Uh, and that was the, uh, the water in the engine problem. So a couple of uh, couple of quid for new coal plugs, and problem was solved. Uh, as you said, we're going to put a new battery on it now. Hopefully, that'll give us a bit of off. And because it's the 180D engine, it's got the standard iron uh, pump on it, and there's no lift pump. It's got a primary filter and a secondary filter. And um, I was speaking to somebody else, and they had problems with it. They owned one years ago, and they used to uh, use a lorry and the air tanks to push the diesel through. So, armed with that information. I made up a little um, device with a simple bicycle pump and these are the bungs they use for testing sewers so I drilled it and put a, a lorry tyre valve in it and then with the um, bike pump we can just pressurise the tank by sealing it into the into the tank into the diesel tank Tighten it up so it seals the the neck, and then we just pump up. And then that provides us the pressure then to push the diesel through. You can see how much pressure is in you now when I you can hear the air rushing out, so only need a couple of pounds. Nothing really, nothing really major. This saves a lot of hassle, a lot of hassle. So we've got the new battery, a lot lighter than the other one. I guess we're gonna have to make some new uh, some new battery leads up for this. Yeah. Could do with them being a little bit longer, can we? Yeah, we did uh,
Good old British weather. Injectors off here. Well, let's get them. Um, let's get some fuel up to the pump first. A couple more pumps. So. Yeah, maybe we'll, let's take the take the bonnet off. Is it? I think let's take the bonnet off so we can get the we can get the injectors in. Then we'll put the yeah. put some pressure through the tank. Flow there to the primary filter. Also, I do apologize if there's a lot of wind noise on this video. I forgot to bring the microphone for the camera. I'll talk about Cordy. There's a few pumping through. Pumping some more? Yeah, a little bit more. Yep. We actually had quite a bit of trouble uh, getting this getting this engine to run when we uh, when we first tried to start it. It would run on easy start, but it would not continue to run on diesel. We tried we bled all all the air out the injector lines, um, and it just would not stay running. It turned out to be an issue with the fuel return line. So every time we would take the fuel return line off off the injector rail. I'll uh, leave the leave the diesel flow into a, into a container. It would run no problem. So we've initially thought that perhaps we've got a blocked uh, injector return line. This one here, going back to the going back to the tank. Uh, but it actually turned out to be a little ball valve on the uh, on the return line, which had uh, been shut had been shut off. off. Oh, that was just down there. So that was restricting the flow back to the tank. Okay. So we're happy we got got fuel. Oil level's good. Check we got water. some water and uh, top that up now. Okay, let's see what she's got. Come on, the easiest things to get in and out of. Uh, nothing, nothing is what she's got. Nothing not at a, all? Nothing, not a vault. Not a light on. Nothing at all. Switch. <laughs> In true fashion. Yeah. Um, Is she in neutral? Yeah. Nothing on the switch at all? No. Nothing. We've got the button pressed in. Yeah, 
it doesn't uh, just have to go because that one's a safety switch isn't it on the back there yeah yeah it's supposed to be in there and you press that to start there um, just have to work our way through the wiring I suppose out with the multimeter Decent voltage at the battery. Sure, I checked. Yeah. Assume that uh, the battery's good. It definitely charged the battery. 12.64. Yeah, it's fine. Should be fine. Should get something out at least. Round the starter. Yeah, see what we got. See what we got. The starter. To be fair, but she could do with a rewire anyway, couldn't she? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, work in progress. We bought a man, we bought a workshop man for this, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Let's see what we got down here. Half tidy. Quite. Uh, these connections and the terminals down here are quite uh, corroded. Yeah, we are getting we are getting voltage. Yeah. Yeah, quite. Uh, the terminals are quite corroded. Okay. We're getting voltage to the start there. Let's see if we got. Get jump behind the dash. Jump up it. Take the dash. Take the dash panel off. I like how you've left them loose. Yeah. <laughs> Pre Preempting problems. Yeah. Ugh. Right, so there's our that wire is redundant, I'm sure. That wire is redundant. So that's our red wire up from the solenoid. It should be the 12 volts up from the ignition switch. Yeah. Just check what we got here. Like 12.65. Yeah, so we've got 12 volts there. Yeah. And that blue wire is the one out to the. To the. To the start switch. switch. Start switch. What up? Yeah, 12.65 12 there. Volts out there. When that wire then comes into the. Yeah, that one comes round and up into that switch. Yeah. Which that switch is supposed to be up under there, isn't it? Yeah. And then you push that to start. Check what we got on the back of this. This switch. Which is yet yeah, lower in which is around. So we've got 12 volts up to this switch. There should be nothing on the other side of this. Yeah. So if I press that now. So there's nothing on the other side, so if you press that, it should get 12. It should have 12 volts out. No point. Nothing. No. No point four, no point five. 
could it be a defective switch? Could be. If I grab a piece of wire, yeah, and bridge those connectors on the back, right, that should eliminate this faulty switch. Is the problem? Do you want a faulty switch? Faulty push switch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Simple one at least. Yeah. Okay. Let's get him under there. Uh, let's get him under on the tripod and see if he'll uh, see if he'll fire up.
I can't believe how quick I fired up. So then it hasn't been started for three years. Yeah. So there we go. She still runs. A bit of work to do on her. This bucket has had a, had a fair whack of it. Broken uh, some of the cutting edge off. Nothing, a bit, nothing a bit of heat and Welding won't sort out. So there we have it guys, our oh, case 450, we'll be seeing a lot more of this on our channel as we uh, slowly work through fixing it up, fair bit of work to do on it to get a show worthy but uh, nothing too bad. Hopefully uh, sort that out with some new bushes. It's quite a bit of weird in uh, pretty much everything to be honest. There's a lot of play in this uh, in this front end. Toying with the idea of buying uh, buying ourselves a line boring kit. So uh, that could make some for some uh, interesting content. So between uh, this 450 and the HiMax 370C that we own, I'm sure we get our fair bit of use out of it. Unfortunately, we can't uh, we can't move it out to you guys in this video because this old girl here is uh, not currently running, so there's no way of getting. Uh, Getting it out of a parking spot. Sounds nice, isn't it? Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next video.